as well. So uh, this is a more complex example, obviously, than what we looked at before. So I want to briefly talk about annotation development support. Um, since annotation support was added to Java, annotation-based development is becoming much more prevalent. And as far as Spring goes, support for annotation development was added in Spring 2.5, and then it was further enhanced in Spring 3.0. The way that this was manifested for Spring Web applications was that there were several stereotype annotations that were introduced which designate the layer or role of any annotated Java class. And the annotations are component, service, repository, and controller. In addition to adding these stereotypes, Spring also added the ability to auto-detect these classes so that you don't have to explicitly define them in the context file. So if we actually take a look at the context file, I'm going to open up the, file, the context file itself, we see that there is this component scan directive which specifies that um, the, this package should be scanned to find any annotated Spring components that might exist in that package. The benefit of using this approach is that I don't have to, you know, register every single bean in my application into my XML file. So it reduces in less XML configuration. But one of the consequences of that is that the XML file no longer provides you with an inventory of the spring beans in your project. Or, and it doesn't show you their interdependencies. However, the tooling included in Michaels for Spring fills this gap by letting developers still see the auto detect Spring components as if they were still defined in the XML. So while I don't have any references to any of my data access objects, all I, the only reference I have in this XML file is to this component scan directive. If I go to the outline view, we'll start there, I can see the results of the scanning. So I can see that it found two data access objects, one for my payment and one for one for payment, one called payment DAO and the other one called customer DAO. And then if I take a look at the dependency graph, I can see that those two, uh, those two components were also showing up in the dependency graph. So this is a great example of tool support for annotation development. And in a few minutes, I'll show you more examples of this in my clips for Spring. So uh, let me close out this context file. Let's go and, and take a look at the services context file. So this one here is a little less complicated. Um, but I'll expand this out and we'll see that there were a couple of items configured in this file and we'll see that one of the things that it found was the customer service and I usually like to open the dependency graph so I'm going to go open this up and I can see the results of the component scan in here as well and I'm going to actually use the dependency graph as a way of going get you know navigating to the code and I'm going to open the Java type and this will open up the service implementation in my standard Java editor here and uh, as you would expect, there is, this is a basically a standard, this is a, a service that was generated. Um, as you see, there's nothing here that really tells you that it's generated. It's a very clean implementation of my customer service. Um, and what I can do is, uh, this here's the annotation that basically identifies this particular component as being a service in Spring, or a Spring service. And I, if I wanted to, I could actually, let me delete this real quick, and uh, if I wanted to do this using content Assist, I could go ahead and use Content Assist to actually find the available annotations. And then I can also use Content Assist for helping me identify what the values would be in here. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and specify that it's customer service. Now, this particular annotation um, doesn't have a lot of configuration options, but if I go and take a look at, at transactional, whoops, uh, if I take a look at at transactional and I invoke Content Assist, you'll see that it shows me a list of all of the the, uh, attributes that are available for this annotation. Now Content Assist does a reasonable job for showing me all of these things, but one of the things that Content Assist doesn't do is it really doesn't go far enough into telling me which of these options or which of these attributes need to be set in a particular context. And that's where the Spring Annotation Editor really comes into play. So I switch to the Spring Annotations tab. One of the things that it will show me is it will automatically determine, hey, I recognize this class by this annotation. It's a Spring service, and it's going to show me the available annotations, and it's only going to show me the ones that are relevant for the given context. So in this case, I'm not going to see any of the annotations associated with controllers or data access objects. I'm only seeing the ones that are related to services here. And you'll notice that uh, in this case, it's showing me that there is an at scope annotation that's often used with services. If I don't know what the at scope annotation is, is for, I can go ahead and click on it, and what it will do is it'll bring up a um, 
a brief description of that, annota of that annotation in the uh, My Eclipse for Spring Help. And then it will also, from there, uh, where available, we will provide you links to some online resources where you can get some more information about what this annotation is for and how it should be used. Um, so that's uh, an example here. And then I also have the ability of you know, showing you what some of the possible values. This is something that you don't get when you use only Content Assist is some guidance and configuration of those values. And then as I click on different, you'll notice that the editor is very tightly linked to the annotation editor. So as I make changes in the annotation editor, they're immediately reflected in the Java editor and vice versa. If I make changes up here, they'll be immediately reflected in the annotation. So they're very tightly linked. And I can use the uh, outline view within the annotation editor to actually navigate to the different methods that I might have within my, uh, within my, my class. So this is just uh, one uh, example of the annotation editors that come with My Clips for Spring. Um, it's a really valuable tool and it's just it's so much better than using Content Assist because I am being guided and I have immediate access to resources to help me figure out what I should be using in a particular context. And I'll show you a few more examples of that coming up. Um, if I click, uh, let me go ahead and close that. Uh, let's, we'll take a look back at the DAO layer. Um, you know, the components scans here, we can um, open up the Java element and you'll notice that this is a different stereotype. It's using the at repository stereotype. So it on the spring annotation editor automatically, you know, adjusts itself and says, hey, this is a repository, so I'm only going to show you the options that are appropriate for repositories, um, repository annotations. Um, we also have an annotation editor. This is new for 9.0. We also have annotation editors for JPA. Um, so if I open up one of my JPA entities, um, you know, JPA uses a lot of annotations. And uh, what I can do is I can open up the, the entity in my Java editor and then switch to the JPA annotations tab. And in here, it will then show me all of the, oops, did I, here it will show me all of the JPA configuration options. So here are the class level annotations that are available to me, and here are the annotations that are available to me on the individual attributes of the JPA entity. Um, and yeah, I can even control my name queries and I can add native name queries. So basically all of the capabilities of JPA are, you know, are reflected within this editor, making it a heck of a lot easier than me trying to go through and use Content Assist to do all these configurations. Hey Neil, one thing to note, um, you also don't have to go in and make any configuration changes to your project to get all of these annotation editors to come up, so you don't have to add any special facets or project natures. Really just having the JPA code in your project is enough. Yep, exactly, exactly. It's, very, it's a very lightweight tool. Um, so it just shows up whenever you open up a Java class. That's, I mean, even if this is not a Spring project, if I open up a, a JPA entity, that annotation editor is going to show up with, uh, the, with uh, the configuration options. Um, so 